Welcome back to the podcast. It's your girl, Cammie Crawford. Welcome back to Relationship. And today, rejoining us on the pod, we have Lisa Smith, licensed marriage and family therapist and TikToker at So My Mom's a Therapist. Lisa, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Honestly, our last episode, I loved it so much because I just feel like, you know, we talked about toxic relationships and we had so many people write in. Uh, we do from week to week. Like people are always writing in about their toxic relationship situations when it comes to romantic relationships. But today we're talking about toxic family relationships, <laughs> which I'm sure as a licensed marriage and family therapist, <laughs> you hear a lot. The abundance. Yeah. The abundance of it. Yes. I mean, I am still, you know, I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy for two years now. And just this week, my therapist was like, we're going to have to start unpacking some of your family stuff, like with my biological father. And I was like, have I made it to that? Have I have I unlocked this part now? Are we there? I'm like, are, are we sure? Like, are, Which is crazy because I feel like when people first hear about therapy who haven't been to therapy, like I was talking to my cousin about this and she was like, I don't know if I want to like dive into all that deep stuff. And I'm like, a lot of times you don't dive into the deep stuff right away. I, absolutely not. You don't start there. Some people, and this is why a good therapist is going to kind of gauge, do you, do you want to talk about something? Do we want to go right in there? Do we want to dive into the deep end? Or do we really need to take time and just get to know each other and build trust? Because it's a genuine relationship. Mm. My biggest tool is a genuine relationship and that you trust me and you know that I'm not full of BS and that we, we're going to develop and learn to trust each other. And that allows us then to go into the deep end. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, there's no way around growing up and cultivating other relationships outside of your home without looking into how your relationships were inside of your home. Absolutely. They can't, they cannot be separated from each other. What are the, one of the things that I'll say to my clients a lot is you come out of your home subconsciously. It's not something co that we're conscious of with a table that's set. Yeah. That they, they say to you that basically they're saying, this is what it looks like to do life. This is your table setting. This is where the silverware goes. This is where the cup goes. And you come out with a table set of this is what it means to do life. This is what it means to be a woman or a mom or a dad. And, that, and you have it set. What we don't realize as we get older, we get the ability, and this is what therapy is, is a chance to look at that table and say, do I want to change any of it? Mm, mm -hmm. And when I do have a family, if I choose to have a family, how do I want to say, this is the table I'm going to give to you, and then you get the same opportunity. Yeah, because, I mean, trauma in families runs through generations. And I think now that I'm becoming well not becoming I'm a grown ass bitch now that I'm an adult <laughs> I'm like but now that I'm growing more into my adulthood I'm realizing that people in my family are just human beings and that's a scary realization to make like your mom is a, a woman your dad is a man <laughs> and like your grandma is just another a per like a person these are just people who have had life experiences and sometimes it's not all their fault why they can or cannot provide certain emotions or love or, you know, there's, you can't, it's, it's hard to try to come up with something that you never had or never saw. And I think it's a conscious effort to change things. What do you think about that? Well, you know, you brought up a good point and I, I would call that like a both and is this place as we get older that we can look back see that they're they're human mm -hmm. and you look back and say how look at how they were raised and so i can look back and say i can have a lot of compassion understanding mm -hmm. for the way you are the mistakes you made and at the same time i can also leave space to say that was awful yeah or that was wrong or that shouldn't have happened and i can leave both at the same time because if it's all compassion then it often overrides or trumps our experience where our body might bend that was like fucked up mm -hmm. and it should not have happened and so we want to be able to start to cultivate both and be able to hold both yeah yeah and i feel like there are so many situations where people either go all one way or all the other way that's right and i think that that in itself is toxic for yourself it's it's kind of toxic for you to you know say oh everything that my mom did like she was just a person and she just she's had a really hard life and like what about you and then it's also hard to be like 
I, you know what, fuck them. They, they did this to me, da, 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 da. like not, not including the fact that, you know, they might have also experienced trauma. Right, and that's where we notice our own growth is to be able to hold a balance of those two. Mm -hmm. You're right, anything on the extremes of either of those, we're gonna lose that sense of health. Yeah. That healthiness and being able to arrive to a place that says, and today, where I am in present time, that's up to me. Yes. What I do with it going forward is up to me. If I live stuck in the past, then I have myself stuck in a blaming or a victim mentality that doesn't say that you possibly could be a victim. That can still exist at the same time. What you do with it today moving forward, that's our responsibility. Mm. How often would you say that clients come to you? And do you say clients when you have like, Therapy. Is it a therapy client? I, I do. I mean, I don't. I don't call them client. I mean, I don't say to their face, "Hello, client." I know. I'm like <laughs> I'm, now. I'm thinking. Does my th uh, does Kelly uh, think I'm a client? No. <laughs> you know. I. You know. I genuinely am. I'm genuinely fond of my clients. Yeah. Um. And so I just care for them. So it feels weird to yes, but yes, but they are. They are the people that I see. Yes. Oh, I don't want to think that my therapist calls me a client. You know. You know, then I wouldn't go there. I actually had I had one of my clients. They do find me on TikTok every now and then, and I always know because they come into the office and they go, "So, uh, funny thing happened this week," and I'm like, "Uh oh, here, here we go, here we go again." And one of them, who's a college uh, college kid I've been seeing for about five years, and she said, "I didn't like seeing you on TikTok," and I said, "Why?" And she said, "Because I was getting to hear." like what you think in the back of your head psychologically, the, the framework and how you think. And she said, I don't, I never see that. I mm. see you just interacting. She's like, I've always known you were doing stuff, mm. but I didn't like hearing what you were doing. Oh my God. And I was like, <laughs> then don't watch it. Yeah, just block me. You want me to block you? Block me. <laughs> I don't know, if my, if my therapist showed up on my TikTok, I think I would, I, okay, I don't know. I'm sure your clients feel the same way. And I, I wonder if therapists know that like, I'm so invested in my therapist's life. I want to know <laughs> everything about her life, but she doesn't tell me anything about her life. I know. And I want to know so badly. <laughs> I want to know so badly. I have a friend who was like, I knew I had to break up with my therapist when I started asking her questions about her baby shower. And I was like very invested in what she was doing for her baby shower. No, no, you know, I think it's more, it's very common, but that's also a testament to the genuine care. Mm -hmm. And the therapy relationship is such a unique relationship because with friends, there is a sense of it goes both ways. Yeah. And then you get in this therapeutic relationship where you know they are invested in your life. They genuinely care about you. They want, they're the, your biggest cheerleader. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, sometimes it hits of like, but I don't know anything about you. Yeah. Like I want something. So believe so therapists feel differently about this. I will often disclose little things intentionally depending on the particular client mm -hmm. that that I give them what they need, which is a sense of like, okay, you are genuine. I know who you are. Mm -hmm. So I will give them a few things that also help balance that out a little bit. Yeah. But not but don't rupture or threaten our therapeutic relationship. But to your, I actually had a client on Tuesday who said I just can you just tell me where you meet your friends and have a glass of wine? Can I just happen to show up there? Can oh. I just? And I said, that is one of the biggest compliments because what does that tell you? And she said, because I just know we'd have fun outside yeah. of here. And I was like, girl, damn girl, we would have so much yes. fun outside of here. <laughs> we would have the best time. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. It, no, it took over a year for my therapist to finally tell me that she was a Gemini. <laughs> and I've shit talked <laughs> Geminis. <laughs> for a whole year and then finally because when i first started working with her i think i i was talking about signs and i was like what's your sign she was like mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, i'm not telling you and it's probably for the best because anything she would have told me over that year i would have right. been like well that's because you're an air sign <laughs> right you would have nothing interpreted. to do with it I, I think people need to hear that about your therapist i think mm -hmm. one of the reasons i keep showing up and making videos on tiktok because i'll hear things like are you really a therapist you don't act like a therapist or look like a therapist and i think we need to break through that like no therapy doesn't mean you have to come in and like disclose all your problems and someone's just sitting there going mm -hmm. yeah you know what I mean? no. no taking notes scribbling yeah, on right. some no, we, ominous paper this is a genuine <laughs> relationship and we're you know if you don't do anything different nothing changes and we just want to help you navigate life and, and support you along the way no yeah. matter what that looks like i love my therapist i texted her last night because something that we talked about i did and i was like you'd be so proud i can't wait to talk to you about it in the next session and she was like, I am so proud of you. That sounds great. Like, can't wait to hear about it. And like, they, it feels yes. like they're your friends. Yes. But like, we're not friends, I guess. But I don't want to think that. 
But I want, I want to tie that, though, to what we're talking about with parent relationships, because what you get from a therapist, or what you should be getting, is someone who says, I unconditionally care about you. Mm. I am not judgmental. I am here to help you navigate life, which, believe it or not, is what our little bodies need when we're growing up. Mm. And often we don't get that from our parents. And so often what's left over in our adult life is how do I learn how to cultivate an internal parent that has two qualities? They have to be both nurturing and loving, and protective. Mm. And if we haven't gotten that growing up or parts of it were missing growing up, that is what we need to cultivate inside of us. And the therapist just kind of gives us a little boost of what it looks like to have somebody who is on our side, helping us out, no judgment, genuinely yeah. cares about us. And we get a feel of that, or we should be getting a feel of that. Yeah. Maybe. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How many times do you get people that come to you with family trauma, toxic situations up front? versus how many times you get people who throughout the course of sessions it comes out that like things that they're dealing with maybe in career or in other relationships that it the root of it is family right um because i'm a marriage and family therapist um, i do get my share um, because i specialize in teenagers and 20 somethings you know that always is based in family mm. you know i'm always i i rarely just see an individual a child or a teenager without being able to talk with the parents it, it, it mm. is a family system even if they came in not for family issues it's assumed i yeah. i see it i use analogies a lot visuals stick with me but it is a tree we are all like a tree and those roots what we see now what's coming out of your life now as an adult are the branches what am i producing the tree the fruit the leaves the health of the tree but the health of the tree is rooted and those roots are all from childhood so mm. whether you think we're going there or not we're going there at we're some going. point i will take my time i am not in a hurry this is where my mediterranean blood is like i will we can we can we can take you but we will go there yes someday. oh my god it's it it is scary to do though and yeah. so you know today we have a bunch of people who wrote in with their stories and obviously you know if this is probably going to be a heavier one folks because i'm sure there you know people are dealing with some things um but i think it's good yeah sometimes it is hard to talk about but it's good at the end of it like you feel so much better yeah so you ready mm -hmm. okay here we go. Bring it. All right. This one says, Anonymous, please. A few years ago, I let my sister move in with me so that we could strengthen our bond. She took a job in my city with that goal as well. Three months in, she didn't pay rent, wouldn't share groceries, even though I shared everything, and flirted with my fuck buddy. Still don't know if they ever hooked up. She physically fought me when I told her that her actions, especially with the fuck buddy, were disrespectful and inappropriate. She said, you knew he was trash. Maybe, but I didn't think she was. After I called her out, my sister gaslit me and told me that my family members, oh, and told my family members that I was crazy. Even though the fuck buddy confirmed she made moves on him and I witnessed her flirting. I haven't spoken to her in years. My family belittled the whole situation and said that they can't believe that she would do that. Should I get over it? Dick is a dime a dozen, but snake behavior is a no-no for me. Wow. That, for me, as a sister, as a big sister... This is this that's a that's a heavy one because right, right. I can't imagine not having a relationship with my sisters. But I know so many people who don't have relationships with their siblings or it's difficult to have relationships with their siblings. Not necessarily because of shit like this, because that's that's I don't know. What do you think? Right. I mean, this is such a hard situation. And you can I almost feel like I could just hear her hurt mm -hmm. that that hurt. And not only that, it is. It is the loss of what she was hoping for, which is the hope was she'd move in and we'd strengthen our relationship and that hope of like, oh, I could have something really good. Yeah. And I think that's almost the hardest part is when we get excited and hopeful for something that could be really good or this really bonding sibling. And not only is it not neutral, it is now something that feels like I've let you into the safe place and now you've turned around and kind of like stabbed me mm -hmm. in a place where I became more vulnerable and, and more open. So I think that that hurt has to be addressed. You know, I, that the last part is what got me though. Do, you know, should I just get over it? And that's why I would say, doll, you can't you can't just force yourself to get over something. What I would actually do is move towards that pain and validate that pain, that part of you that is right now hurt and crushed. Sometimes we think because of how much time has gone by, like just get over it. It doesn't work that way. Mm. You know, it doesn't work that way in romantic relationships. So can you start by just giving yourself permission to be hurt? And I'd actually move towards that hurt. The reason why family relationships too tend to sting 
more than others is because they often touch what I'd call as the little girl or the little boy in us. Mm. It, it is, it's what she longed for growing up. Was this a sister that you idolized and looked up to? Was yeah. this one that you were protective and you had under your wing? So it's not just you as an adult. It's like this little girl in you. And I would say she needs to be tended to. Uh, now, I am making myself sound like a therapist. That is such no, a No, I thing love to say. it. I'm <laughs> sitting here like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's it true. Is. It, it is. And that's why I'd say don't, if you try to move past it, then what you're doing is it's kind of like a child who's crying and hurting. You're like, come on, get on with it. Mm. Move on. Get over it. No, no, no. You get down on your knees mm. and you hold them and you go, I know this is so painful. I know you, it was so hard. And give yourself permission not to get over it for a moment. Why do I want to cry? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very emotional about this. But does, like, it, what, there's, what does, it, does it touch something for you? Yes, because like it's true. Like yeah. we we do it to ourselves every day, all the time. We'll be going through something and we'll be like, just get over it. Like just don't think about it. Just keep going. When in reality, like, no, like you can experience hurt the same and or you'll be like, I'm grown. I'm I'm not a child. Like, but there's a part of you that is. Absolutely. And you have to nurture that. Absolutely. And part of growing up as an adult is creating a muscle, building a muscle. It's not easy. That is a very tender, nurturing, protective adult that can even go and like, and I know this sounds a little crazy, but go and kind of sit with that child and be like, I see you. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Right. And tend to them in that way. Yeah. What about advice as far as, I mean, her other family members are not listening to what she's saying and thinking that you know the the sister couldn't possibly be capable of something like this and then the sister right i i don't even know i don't know what can be done as far as that if if they're not listening so and that that's where i would start if you if you noticed i didn't go right to that because mm -hmm. if that's already how they believe we need to assess first and say can they hear me mm. if they can't hear me then can i value myself enough to say if i say something it's only going to be for my value and my benefit because they're not going to be able to hear if they're not even willing to be like help us understand where you're coming from we want to hear your side and it doesn't sound like her family is they're just yeah. like your sister wouldn't do that well that lets you know you don't have a voice there mm -hmm. so if from that point then you need to say is there anything I want to say or do for my benefit do I want to go back to my family and say this is really hard when you say something I would do a track back when you say something like that it makes me feel like I'm not valued or I don't matter mm. and that's the mo and I would do that only for my own benefit not to get some kind of response response out of it yeah yeah but so so hard my encouragement to again okay, relationships are about practice and so this is one of those as hard and painful it is, okay, note for next time, what would I do different? Would I make sure before she she moved in that we were like, all right, let's communicate really strongly. Let's give this a probationary period if this doesn't work after a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. right? Also, we don't know her history with her sister. If it was tumultuous, you know, maybe having like a middle step before moving in. Yeah. Right? Um, but again, I would, again, give yourself grace to say, okay, what, as hard as painful as that was, what did I learn from this as well? Yeah. Oh, something my therapist told me this week in our session. She was saying, we were talking about something different, but similar as far as like family. And she just said, I was just saying like, well, what if I get hurt? And she was like, well, you can't escape hurt. And being vulnerable doesn't always work in your favor, but it is your truth. I could have slammed the laptop shut because <laughs> we do virtual sessions. I was like, Kelly, that's so fucking deep and true. Because sometimes when you share how you feel about something with your family, even with your family, yeah. sometimes your family are, could be like your biggest ops. Like sometimes the family can be the people who are contradicting you the most and who are coming at you the most. Right. So, but you can still share how you feel for yourself. For, for your benefit, yeah. absolutely. Now, when it comes to healthy relationships too, even in family, is I like to use concentric circles. Concentric circles are circles within circles. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think, but just because they're family, they need to be in that innermost circle where they know everything, they're the closest to me, they're the most, we're the most vulnerable with them. That's not always the healthiest. And I like the concentric circles of where we can move our friendships. The most inner one being our most disclosed, our most raw, they know everything about me. Outside being like an acquaintance where you see someone and you're like, okay, I know them, they know me, we don't really know each other. Mm -hmm. But families, we don't get to choose. Yeah. And because we don't get to choose them, it feels like they're forced on the inside. And I would say, well, let's give ourselves more than just two options. Either I'm fully like raw and they know everything about me and it's 
toxic or I feel like, again, it's not a safe place for me or I cut them out of my life altogether. Mm. We can move family into different circles, which says I can be caring and loving and still set boundaries to protect myself. Yeah. I can be vulnerable. I can share in a way that also makes me feel that I'm not putting myself in a place where I'm going to get lit up or get gaslight. Yeah. Mm. Well, hopefully that helps, boo. But That's a tough I one. I don't know about the fuck buddy anyway. Something about it just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about them. They seem like uh, guilty by association. I don't know. They might have to get a new one. Well, in- interesting enough, though, that 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 didn't bother me as much. Yeah, you no, know, do you not know? at all. Because the fuck buddy isn't, if, if that's truly what it is, that has nothing emotional. Yeah. That's not an emotional thing. This has an emotional investment with yeah. sister. Yeah. So that's loaded. Yeah. No, I was like, fuck him. Who cares? <laughs> Let's talk about your sister. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, here goes the next one. All right. Hey, girl. First off, I love your podcast and your facial expressions give me life. Thank you. I recently have been dealing with a fallout with my parents, and I'm hoping that you can give me some guidance. I'm 29 years old with a beautiful girlfriend and two fur babies. Prior to this current relationship two exes ago, I was with someone for six years. Fast forward to today, she still manages to have a relationship with my parents. Throughout the years, I vocalized that I have an issue with with the relationship my ex has with my parents to her as well as to my mom. Since I feel disrespected by their relationship, I've chosen to stop talking to my parents as long as they continue having a relationship with her. Should I continue taking a step back away from my family? I'm not really sure what is a healthy way to go about this. I appreciate your words. Hmm. Mm. Uh, can I just point out, I mean, if I were to talk right, her, right to her, I would say, doll, I'm so proud of you. Like, mm. I'm proud that you were able to communicate and articulate to your parents to say, I'm not okay with this. This is not okay with me. I don't like that you guys are that close. Yeah. Right. And to be able to articulate it, sometimes we don't articulate, we just react. Yeah. Right. We're just passive aggressive or it's leaking out. And she was able, it sounds like, to really articulate to them, this is, I'm uncomfortable with this mm-hmm. and I don't like this. And again, this is hit so deep we're back down I'm you're gonna get say we're back down to that like our young our young girl yeah. because what is it uh, that young child wants from her parents what does a, what does a young girl want from her parents I mean love and absolutely. <laughs> yeah. adoration absolutely and... I choose you yeah I want yeah. you we are the most proud of you yeah and this one again hits so deep at that little girl who who's almost like they're like well she's like I, I want to be first I want to get your attention and her little heart that little girl heart is wanting to say oh Oh, if it, if this is hurtful for to you, not don't mind her. We got you. Yeah, we love you. You matter to us. And yeah. So as long as her little heart's not getting that, it's it, it's it's sitting in that place. Yeah, yeah. I it's always strange to me. Well, because obviously when you're in relationships with people, you should become close and like you know with their family and friends and like you want you want to be a part of their world. And I think that's a beautiful thing. But when that relationship ends. I feel like those outside, those, those, uh, what would you call it? And ancillary, what's the word? Ancillary, ancillary child. I don't know the word, but you know what I mean? Those relationships that are a result of my relationships are no longer your relationships, except for like friends. I don't care about that. If you're still cool with some of my friends, I guess, whatever, if you guys are really that close, I don't want to, though, have to go to drinks on a Friday night and you're there with my friends. That's not appropriate to me. Right. But as far as, like, my parents, my family, like, I don't know. I've had relationships end where the person has gone back to my family and been like, I'm in love with her. I need you to talk to her for me. And I'm like, they're not your allies. Yeah. They're my allies. Yes. These are my people. I need them. They're on my side. But in situations where it's not like that where it doesn't feel like they're your allies it feels like they're actually your opposition that i think is so sad like it would make me really sad that i love that word you use because that is what our our human nature it wants our we are wired in a way that we want allies Mm -hmm. we want our places that feel safe yeah allies are safe allies are your ride or die yeah, I love I got I love the people in my life that are ride or die. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like yes. you're like same. I, I got your back no matter what. Yeah, you, you say the name, I will come all dressed in black. Yeah, we will go, done. Like, we write right? it on. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I need those people. Those are my people. Yes. and I love also arming up and being that person for somebody else. Mm-hmm. I got you. Yeah, we are we are in this. I get chills when I talk about this. Yeah, 
because that's what we long for from family. But because we don't get to choose family, sometimes we have it mm. and sometimes we do not. Mm -hmm. And when we do not, that's where it strikes a nerve. It's something feels like this is wrong. It feels like it's wrong. And it is. We feel like in, in out extracurricular outside relationships yeah, see i don't know i can't think of i'm thinking and and you know i'm, when you, I'm so ancillary, glad there were two educated people they can't come up with i know this word. women in stem right <laughs> Ancil ancillary ancillary danny <laughs> google that shit we i'm just get, making no. shit up but, i'm just but, making up but words we, it feels in our hearts like we should be the gatekeeper mm -hmm. between our family our nuclear family and that person that we used to be in relationship with so if they're like if it doesn't bother us we're like yeah knock yourself out yeah like, that's okay but we feel like we should be the gatekeeper and when she's saying no no i'm not comfortable with this and the family still chooses to do it again there's that track back when you continue and this is what i would encourage her to say when you continue to talk to them it makes me feel like i don't matter mm -hmm. like i'm not important or my words have do not have value yeah right and to, this is where everybody's different that i heard her say should i keep doing this that is up to her mm -hmm. because if i were to sit, be sitting with her and say no you need to go back and repair with your parents that little girl inside of her might be her might head her head might be like okay the therapist said i need to go back and that little part of her that is so wounded is like fuck no i'm not going back don't make me we are so yeah. hurt in here yeah so i would not tell somebody what i'd say is let's tend to that part of you that's hurt what is that little girl struggling with? Mm -hmm. Because if we're going to go back, then we need to make sure we feel protected and nurtured as we move back. Mm. But that may not be what's best for her. Yeah. Right? And so that's where I would say we got to tend to the whole part of her rather than force ourselves to do something. Because I still think that little girl in her would just throw a tantrum or, or like dig her feet in. Yeah. If her little girl's anything like my little girl, yeah. <laughs> we dig our feet in. Same. But I'm wondering, as far as the ex, like... I'm. Sh I mean, she said that she's talked to the ex before and told her that she's not comfortable with this. But I sometimes I don't know. I my Libra moon gets in the way every single time because I try to see both sides of everything. So I feel like you know there's a chance where maybe the ex doesn't have a good family life and maybe this is the first family that she's had and she feels really attached to them and like yeah okay whatever. You lost it. You lost it in the divorce. That's how it happens. It's people have to be allocated for certain things and like this is this girl's parents so you don't you don't get to just hang on to them just because you're attached to them in that way absolutely and again here's one of those situations in life to say there are going to be things in life you do not have control over mm -hmm. so then we go back to what do i have control over but if if this was i won't call her client if this mm -hmm. was somebody in my office that i was very fond of i would want to work and say what makes me sad, though, is that you really adore and love your parents, and it feels like you lost them over this. So mm. let's see if we can if we can tend to that little girl, and let's see if we can bring some healing so that you feel like you haven't lost something that really is important to you. Yeah. And that's where I'd go. Yeah. And tell your ex to back the fuck off. That's right. Because, cool. like, what you doing? You trying <laughs> to get back with me? Like, what's the tea, you know? Ugh. Anyway. I think that's really good advice. Okay, so the reason why, you know, obviously we talk about all kinds of different things on here, but there's one particular person who I love and adore who asked for this episode several times really? because she's dealing with something and she really needs some advice. So I want to get to her. Okay. She wants to be anonymous, but she said, basically to start, I live with my grandma who has dementia, my parents and my brother. A lot of times during the day, we have a caretaker that deals with my grandma's confusion and questions, but a lot of the time she specifically wants to ask me questions constantly. I'm fine with it, but it gets worse at night. My parents want me to be the one to babysit her, quote unquote, while they're working if she has any questions, but a lot of times it gets to be too much. She also wakes up in the middle of the night, and again, I'm the one that ends up having to put her back to bed, and it gets exhausting because I don't get any sleep. I tried to talk to my family about it, therapists, friends, but everyone everyone but my parents just put the blame on me and tell me to deal with it because we're a family and no one else can relate. I tried talking to my brother about it, but he's extremely abusive, so I try to keep my distance. I've tried to spend all my time at her job until closing just to be away, or not her job, a place that we go to. <laughs> this is a different place. I try to spend all my time at Starbucks until closing just to be away, but I want to be able to be with my family during all of this. I'm only 21. I can't deal with all of this anymore. What mm. do I do? 
Oh man, that that is such a hard one. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason, as you were, as you even just like listening to the story, like I, I can, I just get such like a heaviness in my heart because I was imagining being in her situation and it feels so stuck. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the hardest feelings to have in your body is when you feel stuck and when you feel alone. And it sounds like she has both. Yeah. There's nobody that I feel like is an ally that has my back that's checking in to say, what do you need? Mm-hmm. What is, how, how are you doing? Is this too much? Yeah. And again, feeling like I can't, I can't move. I can't get out of the situation. And that's one of the things that can, that can sink our mood, even into a depression. It can sink our mood is when we feel both lonely and we feel stuck. Yeah. So I would sit down with her and say, all right, L- let's see what we can do. Let's see how we can help you get unstuck. And what are you doing right now to help get yourself unstuck? I would literally like light up the fact that like l- I'd be so proud of you. Look at how I hope you are so proud of yourself. You even just staying at Starbucks is you trying your best to help yourself and take care of yourself. I would start there than anything big, mm-hmm. right? Because she needs to be able to survive. This is a survival mode. Yeah. It sounds like she has a very strong family system. And again, kind of where we started this podcast when her family table is set. Yeah. Right. And sh- and this is and sh- they're like, this is what it means to be family. And that's where I'd come in and be like, well, can we challenge what it means to be family? Mm. Just because they have chosen to have grandma in the house. Is that your choice? Mm. Well, where do you have choice? Mm-hmm. Where do you have control? Yeah. Right. And I would start to challenge that. That was what they chose family to look like. If you were to imagine it, would you want family to look like something different? And when someone feels stuck in the moment, I start very small. I start with what do you have control of in your life? Well, I have control of what I'm gonna wear. Right? Focus on that. When you pick out your clothes in the morning, I want you to focus in, I get to choose what I'm wearing. I'm gonna choose to do this. I'm choosing to get in my car. I'm choosing to go to Starbucks so that you're starting to get that feel of things that you have control of in your life where it feels like a lot of it is out of your control. Mm. So that's where I start. That would not be the end point. But we got to give her back some sense of inner core that feels like it's hers and her yeah. life. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you don't love grandma. Absolutely. It doesn't mean that you don't love your family. It doesn't mean that you don't love your parents. And like you don't appreciate the fact that y- you you are taking care of this person. And like it doesn't mean that you don't want to provide care. It just means that you have boundaries and you have limits in your human being and you're tired. Right. And you didn't uh, you didn't ask to take on this responsibility. Caretaking is not easy. And I'm sure there are a bunch of people listening who have to be the caretaker of, you know, their parents or their grandparents or their kids. Sometimes you don't want to be the caretaker of your kids, I'm sure. (laughs) That's real. I don't have any kids, but I feel like. Let me just tell you, you can be like, dolls, I love you, but I don't like you right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. Mommy's going to go take a walk. That's right. That's right. With a glass of wine. (laughs) Yes, exactly. A bottle. I'll be back when I'm ready. A bottle and a straw. Mommy time. So, like, just taking care of, even when I take care of my dog, some days I don't want to take care of his ass. I love him. Sometimes I don't want to take you out to pee at two o'clock in the morning. Right. Take care of yourself. So the reality <laughs> of a situation like this, and I'm going to be very direct and very blunt, the odds of them changing are, are nil, mm-hmm. next to none. The The only way that you're probably going to get any kind of change or protection or setting boundaries for yourself, and I love that you said that, I can be caring and loving and still set boundaries. Mm-hmm. I can still say, I love my family, I love my grandma, and this is still not okay, mm-hmm. or this doesn't work for me. And that is foreign in a lot of cultures. Coming from a great culture, like, no, I can be caring and loving, and I don't want to hear your opinion. And they're like, yeah, "What? What?" <laughs> they're like, "Is okay. that English?" Uh, <laughs> so here's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh. Yes. In we go. Yes. Right. Yes. And so I under and having worked in a lot of um, different cultures, I do a lot of international work. Is understanding you have to have a sensitivity for different cultures as well. Mm-hmm. And I I'm very sensitive of different cultures. And that was my mind also went to. I wonder. This sounds like a very strong family unit where there isn't a lot of space for individuality or your opinion um, or being able to listen. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I don't demonize that. I just have a lot of sensitivity for different cultures. Yeah. But what I would encourage to say is, okay, what are our steps? Where's your North Star that you're building either a career or a job or something that will eventually be able to move you out of the home? Because the odds of you being able to be able to speak in a way where you get those boundaries in that home is going to be very hard and very challenging, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can. You can start saying, how do I be caring and loving and set boundaries? Right. But you're going to get opposition on all fronts. Yeah. Brother, mom, dad, 
you know, caregiver, care, you're not going to get anybody who's like, yeah, we need to listen to her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, especially parents. Because they're like, you're a kid. One day you're going to want somebody to take care of you. And one day we're going to need somebody to take care of us. And it's like, yeah. And then I'll hire someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hire someone whose job that is to do that. that that's that's <laughs> right. You know, I just had, the, I had a very similar, inter- I've had a similar conversations with a client who whose sister is severely disabled mm. and the mom is basically like, this is your sister you're gonna have to care for her the rest of your life mm. and our conversations have been kind of like there's that that challenging challenging those those cognitions challenging wait hold on that was mom's decision yeah you didn't sign up for it you didn't have the baby. Yeah. Can I be a caring sister and get to choose what works for me, not what is just thrusted upon me? Yeah. And it feels because that 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 table is set from the beginning, it feels almost like you're being like mean. Mm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mean. Like don't you can't move the family setting. You yeah. can't move you can't rearrange the table. These That's, are heirlooms. Yes. This is the family China. Yes. <laughs> You You're can't. breaking it, yes. yeah. right? No, that's not what we do. That's not yeah. what family means. And actually getting down, talk about root work. What does it mean to be family? Mm. And people can have different definitions. And I can be caring and loving and still set boundaries. Yeah, yeah. And again, tying it back, it's so hard because it taps in to that young girl. Yeah. She may feel different at work or when she's at her, at, her, at work or in school. But when she's back home, it's almost sometimes like we turn in to a little a little girl yeah right? yeah Ugh. you know, like you're, i just want to go outside and play like i don't want to have to do this all the time yes. i don't want to be up with grandma all night and That's there's right. nothing wrong with that because i think at the end of the day like it it's going to build resentment and then it, it's like you've missed time or like maybe there were things that you wanted to do or places you wanted to go and you felt like you couldn't because you had i've had plenty of people that i know who have had to do similar things yeah. And so much resentment is built up at the end of it because they're like, I just wanted to be able to live my life the way that I want to live it yeah. and not have this responsibility. That's a big responsibility. Right, right. And again, with those situations, I know a lot of them myself too, it, it is a sense of I've lost choice. Yeah. I've lost the ability to choose or have control. Yeah. And it's just a sense of like, this is just the way it is. And that's where I'd kind of go in and be like, wait, hold on, let's challenge that. Mm. Right? Where's our North Star? Where are we heading? Let's have a direction we're heading so we feel like it won't always be this way. And then again, getting really micro, micro elements into what do I have control of now? Yes. Girl, I hope that helped. Thanks for, the, thanks for the subject uh, tip. She's been asking on a weekly basis, and I know. But you're hearing it, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, that's she's like, tired. That's right. She's on fumes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, somebody help. Like, SOS. Like, she's sending off a flare from inside her house. Yeah. Being like, help. Yeah. Right? Oof. As far as just overarching advice, yeah. what can you tell our listeners about you know, dealing with toxic relationships. Some people are dealing with relationships that they maybe didn't even write in about that are really traumatic. And, you know, not to negate anyone's trauma, everyone has their own level of trauma, but right. some people are living with their abusers and some people are, you know, living with people who, you know, verbally abuse them all the time. And like, what can you say to them about coping, getting through, communicating? Mm-hmm. When is it, when is it, because I feel like communication is obviously important, mm-hmm. but when does communicating about your feelings actually become like a bad idea? So, and I love that sense of like overarching I- advice. I, I mm-hmm. feel like that's when I, I don't I don't run out of things to say. I'm like, oh, yeah. open that puppy up. <laughs> we could go another hour. Yes. Um, you know, I think it's, believe it or not, it doesn't start with the family relationship, it sh- relationships. It starts with the relationship with yourself. Because the more I learn how to tend to myself, there's that internal parent I want to grow. I know I've said it five times, but it's so important. You know, and we need to cultivate a voice in us, a part of us that is nurturing and protective, both elements. Just nurturing, our, we, our little girl doesn't feel protected, only protective we don't feel tended to when we're hurt. Mm. And the more I tend to myself, the more I will value my own time and my own voice. And when I learn to value my own time and voice, then I will stop and ask myself first, are they going to even be able to hear me? And if not, then I value myself enough that I'm not going to waste my time using my voice for someone that cannot hear me. And if I am going to say anything, I'm going to say it. So I walk away and be like, girl, 
we love what you said. Girl, yeah. You lit that shit up and I am so proud of you. Yes. I have to tell you, I had a moment two months ago where I said something and it was like one of those, like I dropped the match, washed it light up. Yes. And I walked Angela away. Angela Bassett. And I was <laughs> like, I have to tell you, there was music playing and it was a slow strut away and I'm just... I did it for me. Yeah. I did it for me. And so then the focus isn't trying to get something from the outside. It's about learning. I can get it internally. We need to learn how to self-regulate and co-regulate, but that self-regulate, tending to self is so important. Mm. And then learning how to have a voice in those family systems. Sometimes it's helpful, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. Like we talked about, if we get to this place where we really want to start setting boundaries with our family, I still, you know, it was about about maybe 12 years ago. My, my dad passed away this year. Oh, he, um, sorry. It, he had, yeah, he had a, a neurological disease. And, but 12 years ago, he was a very boisterous, loud, gregarious man who also had quite a temper on him. Mm. And I, but I loved, loved my dad. And I still remember that big fiery Greek man. I still remember about 12 years ago, the day that I stood up to him. And here I was a grown ass adult with children. And I still remember saying, you know, pop, I love you but that's not okay and if you say something like that again I'm gonna walk out of the room and I have to tell you I was shaking like yeah. I was five years old yes my little girl in me was like, oh, gosh, like, <gasps> She's like I can't believe you said that that's right that's right it took it took years of therapy to get to that place where I could say I can be caring and loving and still set a boundary it's hard with a parent because you have that little girl that family system is so strong mm -hmm. and so learning how to tend to ourselves in a way that I can start to set boundaries with my family as well to be at Christmas to be at Thanksgiving mm. and to be able to say to my partner we're gonna stay if there comes a point that I need to say this is not working I need to leave we're gonna pick us up and we're gonna walk us out mm. And mm -hmm. so learning how to set those boundaries with, or be able to communicate and then action to put with it. Yes. Because just because you're family doesn't mean you have to sit there and like take every single hit. Exactly. It's exhausting. Exactly. And like even, you know, in my family, so I have a Jamaican family. And if you have a Caribbean family, I, honestly, any foreign families, <laughs> you know, they just don't have any boundaries None. with the things that they say, the things that they comment on. Yep. It's just like a free for all. It is. And they run hot. They run hot. And like <laughs> when you question it everyone else in the family is like what are you doing right why are you why are you going back and forth with grandma yeah you know she doesn't mean it like that but it doesn't matter how she means it it matters how i receive it it matters the impact that it has yeah. so love my grandma you know she helped raise me she doesn't listen to this podcast thank god she would never i told her it's called relationships with a p because she was like i don't believe you i was like well then you know me but she once made a comment about my weight which not once, I mean, just she's Jamaican. She, yes. the Caribbean people, oh. African people, I, all foreign people, comments about the weight are like a free for all, but it doesn't mean you have to take it. Yes. And so she made a comment about my weight. And of course the little girl in me was like, I can't believe she said that. I can't believe, can you believe she said that? But we're not gonna say anything. We'll just walk away. We'll just walk away. We'll just like let her have it. No, the yeah. adult version of me asked her, why is my weight a topic of your conversation oh, right now? Oh, I love it. I don't appreciate that. Oh, I love it. And I would rather for my weight and my body to not be a topic of your conversation. My mom was in the <laughs> kitchen, literally washing dishes, and I could I swear I heard the dish <laughs> in the sink, and she looked back at me like, <gasps> Cameron. And she was like, she looked at, she gave me that look like, yes. please don't do it. And I was like, no because yes. she needs to know yes and my grandma even looked she was like oh well that's not how I, you know i didn't mean it like that I, I think some of the most toxic words are they meant well exactly oh because it doesn't matter it how doesn't they meant it it doesn't matter it. Yes. it matters how i received it and i didn't like it yes and i was so proud of myself it was like the match throwing moment yes. i was like I did it. Yes. I stood up to grandma. And, and I can still be caring and loving and adore yes. you and still doesn't mean I need to take every arrow to the chest. Yes. Yes. Right. And I think, I mean, I watched and I watched on TikTok when, because last year was my first year on TikTok. And as the holidays came, I couldn't believe the amount of comments that started saying, 
help, help, holidays, holidays. Mm. And I was like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Holidays are not the easiest time. People literally get like anxiety and panic attacks over going into their holiday situation. So this is perfect, this sense of how do I be caring and loving and still set boundaries? How do I know if I'm going to go to Thanksgiving, my partner and I, we're going to plan on going for a walk, going to get the ice, going yes. to, I mean, so I can get breaks from my family. Yes. And if you need breaks so that I'm going into an environment, I don't feel like I'm opening myself up to get creamed. You just gave me a podcast idea. You have to come back before the holidays. Love it. You have to help. You have to write that down, Danny. <laughs> we have to. We have to prepare. It's the holiday toolkit. Yes. It's, yes. It's the holiday like safety kit. Because that is the scariest. That's like the trenches. Oh, it is. Which it, holidays are supposed to be the most beautiful time of the year? Whatever, a joyous occasion, and it is. But then there's a lot of things that fester up. So you you have to come back done Would thank you to. so Would much for joining us can you remind everyone where to find you sure i'm on tiktok i'm on the podcast on spotify and apple youtube and instagram all the same name so my mom's a therapist pays nod to my two favorite things which is being a therapist and being a mama which i love oh i i love you i want you to it's be my mom also i love my mom we wait, we, we need bonus need moms more. we need, we need bonus, bonus moms, moms and yes. aunties and i have them in yeah. my life and i'm that to so many people too so yeah. i will sign up to be your bonus yes uh thank you i'll take all the moms i can get with good <laughs> advice please and hugs yes and hugs thank you so much my pleasure hi i'm cammy crawford host of the relationship podcast thank you so much for watching if you like this video and want to see more videos click below to subscribe and like this video for more dear media content so shut up and listen